Hello guys, um, so we're studying today, um, we're doing um, cell biology in a nutshell from, from my, my, my notes. Uh, say hi Ruby. Say hi Sarah. Hi, say hi. Hi. Say okay, hi. so <laughs> we're continuing um, and we were learning about um, diffusion at this um, section um, and um, membranes of the cells. So, um, hypotonic is where we left off. Hypotonic meaning a lower concentration, and hypertonic meaning a higher concentration of solute. So, um, this diffusion uh, principles, they, they uh, control how cells act, whether plant or animal cells, re depending on their environments and how much water and um, other um, solutes there exist in their environments. So the term isotonic means that there's a stable environment and there's no net movement of water across the membrane um, of cells or plasma membrane. Water um, flows at same rate and there's no tendency to um, flow either entering or exiting the cell. Um, the term turgid means firm for the cell and flaccid means limp. So depending on how much water there is, it could either be firm or limp. So obviously we don't want it to be too firm because the cell can lice or um, kind of um, get um, explode or, or burst. And then the flaccid, if it's too limp, it can also just shrivel and wilt and die. Okay, what is plasmolysis? Plasmolysis when plant cells are in hypertonic environments and the membrane. Um, so it, it, they, uh, the membrane, it says, pushes from the wall, which causes plants to wilt and die. Um, active transport. Okay, that's the next section. Um, so just to elaborate a little bit, um, I looked up plasmolysis. It says that pl <clears throat> plasmolysis, not to be confused with um, the reverse reaction, which is cytolysis. So plasmolysis is when um, the outside environment of the cell is more concentrated or, or hypertonic. Therefore, the cell loses water to the external environment and this causes the cell to wilt and die um because it loses too much water and the protoplast contracts and um <clears throat> so so obviously cytolysis would be the reverse where where the water would come into the cell because the, the the environment inside the cell would be too concentrated and the um, so um <clears throat> So if the, the external osmotic pressure is very low, uh, a net flow of water enters the cell. So, um, so instead of wilting, the cell would could possibly burst if too much water went inside. So a uh, plasmosis is shrinking due to water entering the uh, not. I mean, leaving the cell while um, <clears throat> cytolysis is water entering the cell. Um, so there would be also gaps between the cell wall and the cell membrane if a lot of water was lost. And the cytoplasm would shrink away from the wall due to outward osmotic flow of water. So we're continuing with um, learning about diffusion, and um, this is the plasmolytic plasmolytic cycle. So I went and looked up plasmolysis, and we got a little more information about it. Go ahead, Ruby. Uh, during a plasmolytic. Plasmolytic. Plasmolytic cycle. 
the semi permeable semi permeable uh membranes semi permeable okay. permeable, permeable membranes mm -hmm. plasma membrane and a uh, tunnel plast were forced to adjust to the loss of water from the voc vocal Va vacuum Vacuum. Loss of water from the vacuum in hypertonic solutions. Plasmo lysis or the or to the water uptake until full turgor is reinstated. The plasmo lysis. Okay, so um so p plasmolysis is the opposite of deplasmolysis, which is um, when water enters the cell. And plasmolysis is when water leaves the cell. Plasmolysis is a typical response of plant cells exposed to hyperosmotic stress, which means there's a lot of um, solutes on the outside of the cell pressuring the cell. So all the water wants to leave the cell um, according to the gradient, going down the gradient. Um, and um, so even due to externally freezing conditions, this can cause water withdrawal or removal from the cell, causing loss of turgor. So that means like the cell becomes less rigid and um, due to loss of water and the violent detachment of the protoplast within from the cell wall. Um, the plasmolytic plasmolytic process is mainly driven by the vacuole. Plasmolysis is reversible, caused called deplasmolysis, and is characteristic to living plant cells. In hyperosmotic solutions such as sucrose, mannitol, sorbitol, etc., water is extruded from the vacuole, causing a loss of turgor pressure. If this state persists, the protoplast retracts further, causing the detachment of the plasma membrane from the rigid cell wall. So there are two major types of plasmolysis. Um, then um, depending on the cell type, the viscosity or concentration of the cytoplasm and the osmo osmoticum used, which means um, what kind of solute is used uh, for the for the change in gradient. In convex plasmolysis, shown in the first grid of this picture, the protoplast is rounded up, exhibiting a sym symmetrical um, convex ends, while in the second type, in concave plasmolysis, the plasma membrane separates from the cell wall by formation of several concave pockets. So plasmolysis is reversible again, and addition of hyp um, hypotonic solutions, meaning um, uh, reducing the concentration of the external environment of the cell, or just adding plain water to the environment, will lead to re-expansion of the protoplast and the reinstatement of the original trigger pressure. So the cell will come back to its regular shape. So the central vacuole is the major compartment of osmotic water flow during osmolysis. And once again, so obviously the abrupt change in protoplast size and shape impacts the subcellular architecture as a whole, the organization of plant cytoskeletal elements, namely the microtubules and actin microfilaments during a plasmolytic cycle. So um, in the next section, we're going to touch on what are microtubules and actin filaments. So this is what the uh, microtubules look like in the microscope. And they've been stained green color. And the uh, actin filaments as well look like this and under uh, stainage. So we'll continue and um, with this in the next part. Say bye, Ruby. Bye-bye.